Welcome, everyone. We're going to be talking about human design variables today, which are a key to your enlightenment. Now, variable is an advanced area of the human design system, as it was laid out by Ra Uruhu for us, and it offers us an in-depth look at our cognitive potential. Your human design variables are about your uniqueness, and it provides you with a clear, practical map for the transformation of your awareness. And therefore, it's also about how you are going to experience your life. It's like a key to enlightenment. And it's really about awareness. Ross says that there's no greater revolution in this knowledge beyond the understanding of inner authority. That there is such a thing as leftness and rightness when it comes to the brain-mind system and how it operates is the most important knowledge that we have for the transformation of our consciousness. Now, that's unquote. Variable is found at a very deep level of your genetic makeup. This is not for a newcomer. So if you're brand new to human design, this is not the right place to start. But if you are familiar with living in alignment with your type, strategy, and authority, this is another layer that you can start to uncover the uniqueness that makes you you. So your deepest genetic cognitive potential is what we're going to begin to discuss today. And when you operate correctly, you will have the potential to live out the possibility of your full uniqueness. Now, this is not about happiness. This is not about wealth. It's not even necessarily about health. Although all of those things can improve when you start to operate in alignment. It is, however, about the full expression of your type, your auric frequency, your signature for your spiritual expression of purpose. And what that means is then it's peace for the manifester, satisfaction for the generator, the sweet success for the projector, and surprise for our reflector. So when you're accurately aligned to what is correct for you, you're going to watch, witness, how things unfold in a very special and utterly unique way that you start to get your life. Now, my name is Lavina Archers. I'm a differentiation degree practitioner, holistic analyst, and variable teacher at the International Human Design School. I want to welcome you all to this introductory presentation where we're going to talk about the 16 orientations of awareness and awakening. So what you're looking at over here on the left-hand side is the variable map or grid. Now, it's speaking to the nature of cognition. What is cognition? Cognition helps us find our specific mm, substructure as far as how we as human beings are categorized into different subtypes beyond the regular auric frequency type that most people familiar with human design are aware of. So we're going to dive into something that is cognition. And for those of you, maybe English is not your first, first language or cognition is a new word. Remember, cognition refers to, according to Wikipedia, the commonplace definition, quote, the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. Now, it's going to be helpful for you if you already know what your variable is. That means knowing what these arrows are relative to your specific design. They do not change. Okay, The uniqueness of you being able to operate in alignment. This here is about surrender. Surrendering to your unique cognitive difference. Okay, so I am 
looking at the comments here. And Aaron is saying, I'm in the middle of the four, PRL and DLR. I've heard that these middle four are the most difficult. Wondering if at some point you can elaborate on that, if it feels correct for this webinar. Thanks for the asking, Aaron. Yeah, you know, this middle shifting area, one of my teachers calls it, Andrea Rick Wolf, the geneticist at IHGS, she calls it the twisties, where there is, as you can see, if we zoom in a little bit, let me see if I can, yeah. If we zoom in and see this middle area, we can see that they're all pointing in different directions, relatively speaking, yeah? So if we take a look at this variable grid, and we imagine that it is an evolutionary mm, progress from very ancient way that all of us used to be programmed to be cognitive, and to now the furthest differentiation from that time-wise into the new way of being, we can see that these 16 orientations in this very middle area has an incredible amount of difference. And so that's one of the reasons why it's so challenging, meaning, mm, yeah, difficult for people to grasp or comprehend. So beyond that, I'll, I'll go to our specific groupings now and see if you can get a better sense of it and continue to address that as we move through this introductory webinar. So if you look at the variable mapping, I've just eliminated all the colors so that we can just look at orange. So you can see the background of the box, they're all orange. And what you'll notice is that there is this cognitive grouping, basically, that is hinging upon the very foundation of that square being the same. You see that? So we are seeing people who are designed to be focused and observed in the environment. And what that means is, is that there's a commonality between these four. That the environment, they are designed to be um, seeing the environment in such a way that it's similar to each other, and yet everything else about them is very, very different. So there are ways that we can interpret these boxes and groupings in accordance with, with each of the positions, the positional structure of these groups. So there's the orange, which are focused and observed. There's the blue, where they're focused observers in the environment, as you can see, very different from the orange. So focused observers. And that means if you find someone who has the same color background as you do, that they have a similar kind of movie, you could say. So here's the greens. We have our peripheral observed in the environment. Peripheral is they're taking in life and also being observed. And then finally, we have the yellow. So that's our peripheral observer in the environment. So that's just one way of breaking down this beautiful mm, magic box, you could say, to help us see how we are grouped as human beings. So it gives us a way of interpretation that helps us see just one way of breaking down this box, these orientations into similarities. Whereas all of us are, of course, utterly unique and different, it's just one way that we can look at variable and find our awareness of what we're here to surrender to as far as just the environment. We're just looking at the environment. So now I'm going to orient you to looking at one particular arrow inside of your human design body graph. So instead of colors, now I want you to take a look down at your um, advanced human design chart. And I'm just going to cut it in half right here. And what I want you to see, if you have a passive brain body system, okay, this is your unconscious physiological genetic potential, all of the people down here at the bottom with this passive brain body system, 
you have more of a potential for conditioning from birth because you are very sensitive to taking in a lot of things that may not actually be correct for you because you're so open to and available to conditioning and homogenization that we have something, a brain, body system, that requires some, potentially, some remedial work when it comes to getting your brain on track. What that means is, is it may be harder for you to follow your decision-making process in the beginning if you are incredibly conditioned. Now I'm gonna um, highlight that area in the middle again that Aaron brought up for us and show you that two of those people, the types of people, the green and the orange box in the middle are right there. And so usually we ask people to experiment with sleeping alone and following your decision-making strategy, practicing being your own authority for at least a year before entering into this area of the knowledge. But if you're having trouble, no matter where you're at, however long it's been that you've been trying to follow your human design, no matter where you're at time-wise, if you have a passive brain-body system, then we invite you to explore this area of the knowledge to help you get your brain back on track, okay? Because it can be incredibly difficult for you if you are you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, however many decades in the ex um, life experience that you are in, that you have been conditioned and pulled away from your true cognitive potential, meaning your sensory capacity of how you're designed to take in and interpret life not just the food that you put into your body, but the information and the people that you're around as well. So now if we go back to, well, wait, what about all of us, Lavina, the people at the top here? Yeah, our active brain body systems. You're not out of the woods. <laughs> it just means that you have a very different way of processing and cognating information that is way more mm, concentrated, mm, perceptually relevant, as in you may potentially have a much easier time of attuning to the way that life shows you you should interpret mm, your ability to keep safe and healthy and be correct on this plane it's just a bit easier for you okay because you have a very different kind of brain body system that's leaning deeply towards mm, the seven centered strategic way that human beings for 90,000 years were developed in order to find our safety and security and manifestation of well-being and so forth so when we subdivide people from that respect your brain body systems between being active or passive are very, very different. And that's one of the things I'm going to help you discover today. If you've got your human design map, so welcome. So glad that you're here. Now, one of the things that I want to point out to you, besides those two different ways, there's way more ways, right? There's 16 different orientations, so there's a lot more different ways that we can subdivide this beautiful magic grid. You could talk about binaries. Remember how I said left and right? There's arrows pointing left and there's arrows pointing right. So we've got four different arrows that leads to, and two different ways they could point, that leads to these 16 different possible combinations. Now where this is coming from, quite literally, in your human design is on the top right hand arrow, it's coming from your personality, sun and earth. So if you just look at the personality, sun and earth, I'm going to divide it down the middle right now, okay? And we can see if we look at the personality, sun and earth, look at all those strategics, see the mind? 
and it's strategic, strategic, strategic all the way down. So everybody that's leaning left with their mind, I'm right there with you. We have a strategic mental processing. And then everybody over here on the right hand side, we can see receptive, receptive, receptive all the way down. Very receptive to the motivational awareness frequency of who we think we are, right? So that's what's going on there relative to how we're here to be aware and fulfill our human life's work or potential. Now, again, if we go back down to the bottom, as I just showed you earlier and divided us out by colors, again, the colors orienting us to a kind of life movie, you could say, it's coming from the nodal, directional nodal frequency of what we're designed as human beings to be attuned to. Because each of these, there are four of them in an individual, each of these four transformative potentials have the possibility of being either left or right. And again, 16 different possible variables, just like there's four different kinds of basic human auric frequencies. We now have this that subdivides everyone into 16 different possible variable awareness frequencies. So what this points to is a natural order of things. Back in the day, way back 90,000 years ago, a little bit more, everything was all left. And before that, it was way more receptive and open and aware, the human being that was there before we had the development of the seven-centered human that focused is focused its awareness conceptually on its mental potential, trying to evolve mentally. In 1781, we had a tremendous shift and we had an explosion of right orientations. So the right orientation is usually the people, any of these right facing variable arrows, the people who have a much harder time with fitting in to the standard homogenized way of being. These are our people who, if we can reach them, if you're one of these, we can help them feel so much better about their cognitive difference, their processing, not only from their brain, but also their mind and the way that they interface with the environment, you know, to be able to witness and watch rather than being shamed or blamed or guilted or faulted for being different than what most of society will tell you how you have to be. So the tools that we're going to use for your transformative effect, why you want to use this information is because variable is to awareness what our human design types are to form. It's a tremendous tool for your cognitive transformation, not only internally, but externally in the life. This knowledge can make a difference not only in your human design experiment, but also your life experience. Now, it's not for everyone, and you have to come into this according to your nature. Is it right for you? Is this the right time for you as a nine-centered human being? Because you're uniquely individual, but everybody mm, crawls out of the chrysalis or flowers and blooms at different times and different stages and ages of our lives. So please don't enter into this if it's something that you feel like you have to, must, should, because you don't. As humans, each one of us have a very particular way in which our intelligence expresses itself. I like to think of it as how each of us are designed to have our superhuman powers that are shining through us, our strengths and our mm, potentials when we're operating correctly. 
So unique intelligence in each of us, this potential cognition, comes from the foundation of how our processing is designed to function cognitively. Cognition is a result of your unique perceptions, not just taking in life, but where you are in life and how you see life and how you're aware of life, the cognition of your subjective process of knowing, through sensing, experiencing, thinking, understanding. The central theme of how our evolutionary process functions. Everything that is alive, you, me, all of us, we're alive right here, right now. And we're learning, remembering, and using our knowledge to ensure survival from our cognitive difference. So this is about helping you get over the dysfunction and distortion that you might be experiencing if you're having difficulties. This is about the integration of body, mind, and spirit. Now, dysfunction is bad for business as far as it's not going to help you get ahead if you're cognitively dysfunctional. And most people are running around cognitively dysfunctional, and they have no idea why or how to get out of this cognitive dysfunction. The first step, of course, is to follow your decision making process. So it's not just about knowing whether you're left or right or strategic or receptive. It is about surrendering to your form first. So more deeply that we can dive down into our own personal nature and surrender to our own individual mechanics. When we couple this knowledge with strategy and authority, it gives us a comprehensive set of tools for overcoming decades of conditioning and homogenization that leads us to dysfunction because we're not treating our brain and body correctly. Therefore, we're not called to the right places or moved to the right places. Therefore, we cannot see things clearly. And then our motivational frequency is skewed unfortunately, because we're conditioned to be what we are not. So it's not uncommon to discover when you start to live the experiment and you start to study this, it's not uncommon to think that there's something wrong with you and then shift to see that instead of having to act strategically, you are potentially designed to function receptively. And when you attempt to function strategically, when you are receptive, to translate that into arrows, when you attempt to function in a left way, when you have a right variable arrow, what happens is this puts tremendous strain on your brain, your body, your mind, and it divorces you from your true potential, your cognitive difference. And what that leads to is a catastrophe on many levels. Your well-being is threatened, your longevity is limited, your chemistry, your happiness, your efficiency, your effectiveness, your perspective, motivation, and your bottom line, unfortunately, is threatened because of the incorrect forcing or pushing of attempting to get something, usually from your mind's process, rather than surrendering to what the form is here for. And so that's one of the things that we can mitigate when it comes to conditioning is letting go of all that stuff. So if you're having a hard time letting go of all that mental blah, 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 it is potentially something that can make a difference in your life, not only from the potential to enhance your cognition, but to embrace the uniqueness of what you are, just like knowing your type. What are you uniquely, variably, according to the way your internal structure functions? You know how a crystal captures and reflects or refracts light? Cognition comes from the internal structure of our crystals of consciousness. And every one of us has a unique internal structure to our crystals of consciousness. 
And then what happens is when we're aligned, we can operate to the fulfillment of our purpose, our life's work, because it pulls us correctly towards that which we came here for, rather than trying to live a life that we were not born to live. So it helps us release the stress and pressure when we can let go of all the shoulds, shouldn'ts, musts, have tos, and anything that is expressed upon us or impressed upon us by the homogenized society. If we can let go of all of that stuff, including the minds, blah, 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 and we can just surrender to what the body is here to live. The body is your life. What you'll find is you get, at the end of seven years, is a body that's more relaxed. Now, your mind might still bitch and moan at you and say, why are we so fucked up? <laughs> why are we doing this? And what, shouldn't we do that? And all this blah, blah, blah. But it has less of a capacity to disturb your calm and equanimity when you are experimenting with your cognitive potential. That's why you want to learn this. Because if you've been experimenting with human design, I don't care how many years you've been with us, and you can't follow your decision-making process, this might be your next step. Because it can help you, as a key to high performance, help you find the correctness of your awareness. Because strategy and authority cannot address this level of your mind and your body. So I'm going to read a quote from Ra for you. Quote, variable addresses what strategy and authority cannot. Correctness in the realms of mind and awareness. It guides us in aligning the mind to the natural intelligence rather than attempting to align it with the not self. This alignment makes possible a deeper harmony with our design, greater peace of mind, and ultimately, connects us to our potential and our journey of transformation, unquote. So differentiation is fulfilled in two ways. When we're looking at this variable calculation, this allows for us to have an evolution of our consciousness when we correct and align the pattern with awareness to find our flow, our evolutionary flow, our place within the totality, rather than trying to struggle, fight, or push to be something other than what we are, just imagine. Imagine you're whatever type you are and you're trying to be whatever type you're not. Same thing here. This can help give you signposts of awareness because variable reveals all four areas of deep potential transformation in nine centered human beings. And this points the way that you are designed to operate optimally so that you can take in information and experience and awareness that is correct for you rather than trying to do something that is totally incorrect. So I'm going to make a real hilarious example right here. Let's say you're an off-roading vehicle, you're a Jeep Cherokee, and you're trying to win a sports car race. Are you going to win? No. And this is not about a sports car being better than a Jeep Cherokee. It's not. It's about each of us having our place within the totality and expressing the cognitive gifts that we came here for. So, when we're looking at an advanced body graph, your variable calculation is derived from the combination, again, sun and earth on either side, nodes on either side. So it's detailed through Jovian Archive's human design software. This happens to be a snapshot from the Maya Mechanics online software, mayamechanics.com. So in order for you to know your variable. You must have precise birth time because precise birth time is critical and key, just to let you know. 
this tonal cognition underneath the surface of your awareness, your general homogenized awareness, determines how your not only physical, physiological body functions, but also how your psychological comprehension functions. And it's something that you can really experiment with to find out how well it works for you. So now for those of you who know whether your brain body system is left or right, every single aspect of what is possible for each of us is because of this differentiated imprinting that is inherent in our very nature. And that differentiation is fulfilled in two ways. The first is that you need to deal with the body because if you do not get the body on track, nothing happens. It's kind of like if you imagine as a young adult, you got into a really severe car accident and you got a brain injury. From that day forward, your brain structure wasn't the same and you had a totally different mm, personality. Can you imagine if something like that were to happen to you without the traumatic brain injury, but actually because of the way that you took in life, lived your life, ate your food, interacted with people, and it had the same kind of shifts in your personality construct? The longer that you operate in misalignment, the further and further away you get from your true cognitive potential. That's why this is so critical and key. Start with the body, with the brain body system, because it does make a difference. I have experimented with this for myself and with my clients for a long time now. It is critical that you work with your body first for mm, a majority of the people. That's why human design is predicated on strategy and authority. It gets your mind out of the way because it is about aligning the vehicle, your human body, correctly. When you get your body on track, then things start to line up for you, whether you're active or passive with your brain and body system. So now let's start with the left brain. Your left brain has a higher energy consumption because it's active. So the recommendation to experiment with is not to skip meals. When you're hungry, do yourself a favor and free feed that <laughs> energy hog of a brain of yours. Now, everybody's different. So it may take hmm, a, a smaller amount of food for one person and a larger amount of food for another person, depending on the physicality, you know, the overall holistic imprinting of your body and your mind as well, because your mind does take a lot of energy. Now, this is a busy brain and body. It's actively categorizing, putting things in a box, labeling, linking. So it's, it takes a lot more energy when it's storing information, when it's processing really information. And the left brain has a lower water retention it's designed to be more focused on survival and discrimination of smell or taste or vision, what it sees. It's got a higher level of stimulation that's happening, and that's why it needs more fuel, the right kind of fuel for your brain-body system, taking into account, of course, everything else, the holistic nature of your design. Let's compare or contrast that now with the passive brain body system, the right brain. The right brain has a lower requirement for energy, lower energy consumption. In other words, it's okay to skip meals. You might be eating quite lightly, comparatively speaking, because you're here to have a more relaxed brain body system where as you're storing information you're just passively taking it all in you're not processing it in the same way that a left does so this is about no focus having a level of higher water retention and the itness of being you're here for the experience and you're way more sensitive. It's more about the internal processing, inner vision, feeling, 
mm, frequencies or touch, the way that life touches you. And you're designed for lower levels of stimulation. So on the flip side of that, it's very easy to overstimulate you where you're taking in too much, where potentially if you get overstimulated, you may even shut down in an effect, trying to protect that sensitive brain body system that you have, that cognitive uniqueness that you have. Okay, so two very different ways, just that one little piece. That's your body, and it's designed to be nourished correctly. That's a whole nother story. If you'd like to learn how to nourish your brain body system correctly, the continuation of this particular free live webinar is going to be continuing on Saturdays. The International Human Design School, the Radical Transformations Program, will help you with your four transformative mm, education on these arrows of leftness and rightness that comprise your variable. Because this is about digestion on the brain body side, okay, digestion. And that is a proper dietary regimen for the optimal functioning of your brain's system. It's not what you eat, but how you take in life your conditions and circumstances under which you take in information. It's also about the environment, as mentioned before. So the nurturance and protection of your body, your interface with the environmental frequencies, the path that you're walking. And when you're in the right place, you're more aligned to seeing things clearly. Perspective is your unique seeing what you see or are designed to be attuned to in the environment, your particular way of not only processing what you see, but also coming to an awareness because your mental capacity is fed by seeing those things that you're aligned to correctly. Because it's like what you see feeds your receptivity or your strategic nature. And that, my friends, we go over to the mind force. So your mind, your mental capacity, that top right arrow is also going to be left or right. It's going to be your motivational frequency, what you identify with as who you think you are, the I of being. Now, it's not necessarily that imprinting, that genetic imprinting that you're looking at when you look down at your body graph, that map, you are the one experiencing that genetic potential. So when you're experiencing either strategically or receptively, and you're getting, giving your outer authority, your awareness capacity that is unique to you, it's going to feel fulfilling. Don't care who you are, what kind of type you are relative to your nature. This personality awareness is all about the consciousness field, your interpretation of what you're experiencing from the data stream that we're all exposed to here and now. And that consciousness field is rooted in one thing, the possibility of your correct outer authority. Everyone's mind is here for someone. There is no lack. There's nothing missing, nothing broken inside of you. It's just about alignment to the correct awareness. And your mind is at its best. All of us have our minds best applied for others to express our unique developmental awareness, consciousness. Now, is your awareness designed to be strategic? Or is it designed to be receptive? Let's start with the strategic. Those of you who are left facing arrows at the top, you're designed to strategize or sell people strategies or talk about strategies because that's the way your mind's designed to function. Now the goal of a strategic mind is to be liberated from thinking you have a choice so that you can see. You're here to strategize and discriminate 
your mental capacity focuses and remembers specific things. It's not about storing additional information. That's not necessary. You can pull from your own memory. Your mind has an agenda and a strategy and a goal. Remember not to make decisions with your mind. That's not your authority. But for others, you can con communicate outer authority themes for survival that the other quadrants are going to need. So to learn, trust your awareness of focus. Reveal what you've missed. Test yourself. Because there are specific things that are going to hook you, that you're going to attune to, want to process with, work with, talk about, so forth and so on. That's your mental cognitive awareness potential to be able to see. It's about more of the logical side of things. You might be more oriented towards thinking, processing. You're being strategic. These influences of mm, mental intelligence as we normally put weight on it. How to make our way through the world, survive, find food, or in modern day terms, compete on the mental plane, get ahead, you know? The awareness in interpreting sensory keys are more, you could say, intuitive or instinctual and stores formulas for how sounds react to each other when they're connected. It can lead to a formula of interpretation based on your mental capacity to memorize. It's bits and pieces. It's not a whole and when you're not operating in alignment, what happens if you have this kind of mental processing, your mind might be stuck in the obsession with controlling life. So manipulation, agenda, having cunning reasons for interpretation of things, trying to connive your way through life. So let go of this strategic thinking mind as your own mental process to decide from. And it's hard, but not impossible, I'll tell you from experience. When you have this awareness potential that your mind is here for others and that you can take what you're hearing inside of your head about yourself with a grain of salt, you know? Very interesting that you think that mind. Thank you very much. Now, what is my body telling me? That's what I do with mine. Okay. So let's go look at the receptive people. Those of you with the right-facing mental capacity, your sun, earth, on the right-hand side, your receptivity mentally is about being. So what you may notice is that you don't necessarily know what you know until somebody pulls it out of you because you express information. You don't know how you know. Your primary health system supports the correct storage of what's taken in. And what happens because you are so receptive and different, your intelligence actually reflects your milieu or the others that you're there with who pull things out of you. Notice what they ask of you or they pull from you. Those are your invitations or responding or initiating receptive awareness Mm, observational objective themes depending on your type so you can surrender to being quote unquote used by others who dip into your well of receptivity <laughs> this is the type of person who could just read a book and then a year or a decade later read it again and it's not about storing anything specific but it's about taking it all in relative to what's happening in the environmental frequency around you. Just pay attention and be present in order to learn so that your beingness is surrendered to the profound ability that you have to receive. Because your data that you're receptive to is not being processed as you're receiving it. It's being stored 
indiscriminately and experientially being pulled out of you. So it's the sensory phenomena of experience. Your mind doesn't interfere with the thought process by trying to act like the left strategic people do. If you're trying to act on your thoughts, receptive beings, you're going to lose your ability to absorb the necessary data if you act on those thoughts. Because you're more sensitive and connected to the emotional experiential feeling space of awareness, you have access to non-conceptualized source material. It's the doorway to the future era. Not any of us are the fully mutated, nine-centered human beings. We are all cognitively different, yes, and here to be unique and individual with awareness. And so you, as a receptive being, are the perfect person to have a conversation with. Not about trying to strategize things. It's your true capacity to operate in full receptive being without reason to be surrendered to this awareness of life. So how do we get to these places where our body and mind function correctly? We're going to look at digestion and awareness. Not in depth, because that's outside of the scope of today's introductory lecture, but if you do want to continue, there are ways that your digestion, either active or passive brain-body system, is designed to be nourished from the inside out. And the mind and its mental awareness, the personality awareness, again, strategic or receptive, based upon your unique genetic potential. These are vital keys to help you walk down the pathways of awareness so that your self-understanding is considerably enhanced and deepened. And these vital keys help guide your way because long ago we lost our way relative to awareness. And when you come into contact with the highest level of consciousness and cognitive functioning possible from your system, watch as things shift your environmental frequency from the design, being either observed or observer, and your perceptual capacity being either focused or peripheral. These areas of interfacing with the external world or how we're taking in life and nourished from the outside in and fed from our awareness of what we're taking a look at to allow for our cognitive uniqueness. These are our four radical transformations and a key to high performance of you not high performance as we tend to think about it you know but you living your life with awareness so i'm going to segue into some in resources and then we're going to go into an introduction to this weekend's kickoff event of the first of the radical transformations so to find out more about the resources that I've been talking to you about, you can go to jovianarchive.com. And Ra did a live event in 2009 where he talked about each of the variables as he was speaking to a group of them in person. So that's something that you might enjoy. There's also transformative effects when you work correctly in a group of individuals like yourself who are dedicated to the knowledge. So I personally coined a program called Emerge, and that takes things a little bit deeper for those of you who are already familiar, so that you can have the professional guidance and implementation, experimentation of your unique specificities and advice in small groups. 
And in order to have the potential to just start, there's a new program at the International Human Design School, Radical Transformations Clinic, five weeks of dedicated work together that you can also enjoy if it's something that you want to work with. Now, there's also materials at the IHDS, some books and lecture audios as well as digital book packages. There's free videos on Jovian Archive. And if you want to be a professional in this, there's the differentiation degree program. Further after that is the holistic analyst program. And then to become a variable teacher like myself, that's also available at the International Human Design School. At the IHDS, we also have in the language of Andrea Reichel Wolf, Dr. Andrea Reichel Wolf, she's a geneticist who has been teaching human design for a very long time. There are some self study materials, audio, as well as digital products. So, to rest assured that you're learning from source material, it's important that you know Jovian Archive is the source of this information. There are a lot of people copying knockoff versions of this. And my personal stance is to get to the source of the prime emanation point of the awareness of this material and then experiment with its initial impact myself in order to see how well it works for me. And I encourage my students to do the same if it's correct for you. So all kinds of ways that you can get into this knowledge, no matter what age, stage, level, mm, price point you're at. And if you need any guidance, I am um, happy to help you with this material. Okay, so almost done with this pres Prezi presentation. Personally, I've been doing radical transformation clinics since 2000 and I believe it was t end of 2020 that I got my certification. And then before that, experimenting with my students, guinea pigs, um, with a as a bonus after they went through mm, the basic foundations in human design. And I can tell you from experience that it's one of the most fun things to do, to geek out about human design from this deeper layer, if it's correct for you to do so, of course, when you're ready, okay, when it's in alignment for you.